Hey everybody, this is Dream, and I'm going to uh, be reviewing An Evil Existence. Uh, it just came out today, uh, and the price is $24.99. This game is developed and published by Dryder Studio, and they are a single person de uh, developer. Um, for the first game, I think they did a really good job. Um, I've played a ton of games from developers. Uh, you know, for their first time, first time games, and this one's pretty decent as a side, you know, compared to a lot of the others I've played in the past. It's definitely got, a, it's definitely rough around the edges, and there's a few critical problems, but I, I don't think it's not like unplayable by any stretch, and most of the things are easy to kind of work around. So uh, I'll talk about that more at the end, in the middle of the video uh, of this review. Um, but uh, I do hope that this developer decides to make future games because I think that this is a good starting point to uh, to start from. This is an ID and Xbox game, and like I said before, it retails at twenty four nine nine on Xbox. Uh, I, th I think the price point is actually too high for what it is at this point, but uh, I'm not sure why they came to that conclusion. I think for ten dollars, I think this game would sell quite a bit. It might even be able, like as some people on. I know some people said that it kind of had some resin, uh, res feel to it. I didn't really feel that way. Maybe, maybe some of the old games from back in the day, but not really anything new. Um, I actually felt like it had some deadly premonition kind of stuff going on, but a little bit. I don't know. But anyhow, uh, let's talk about what this game is. Uh, this game is a, a survival horror game. Uh, and there's different things you have to do in the game, like puzzle solving, uh, such as uh, there's a puzzle piece where you have to find a box to reveal a key. There's a there's a lot of combinations that you have to figure out. Uh, in the middle of the game, there's a really cool thing that you're going to have to look on the walls to find numbers, and that's going to lead you to combination later on. Uh, there's actually several pretty decent puzzles in the game. I actually wish there were more uh, because I thought that was kind of a fun thing to do. Uh, the lighting makes it ominous, uh, ominous, so, ominous, ominous, so you can, uh, so it definitely makes it like, you, you feel like you're having to like sneak around to try to find the different key, the, uh, the, the uh, clues for each of the different puzzles. There are also quests, uh, sort of, so, uh, so, like, you need to find different things in order to open doors and to, uh, open certain gates and progress further. Uh, you need to find, figure out how to find fire in one area. You have to figure out how to, uh, find switches in order to turn on power. All those different things. So there's a lot of differentiation in that front. There's also, uh, weapons that you need to find in order to, to kill off the family members who are attacking you. Let me talk about that for a second. So in this game, you are uh, you are a uh, unsolved mystery page creator who decided to visit the household to capture footage for their social media page. And of course, obviously, they regret going then there because the family is still there, and to the family is are murderous uh, people with a very dark past and so they don't like that you're trying to infringe on their area so your goal is to get out alive um, and in the process you're going to uh, have some unique uh, situations with each family member as you get through the uh, their house um, let's talk about the adventure aspect of it so you're uh, the adventure you, you, you're gonna have you're gonna be in different types of areas like a tomb and which they have underneath their house for some reason or you're gonna be in the garage or you're gonna be out in the factory area uh or, or like your their backyard so there's different places that you're gonna be uh in order to try to uh in order to try to find your way away get to get away um, most of the game is spent just uh, trying to find the exit in places and avoid getting killed. Um, that that leads into what makes a survival game because if you have to be really careful and sneaky in some places or you might get hit because if you don't have a weapon 
they might be able to kill you without any effort because uh, so you have to find those weapons as you go I will say that the the game is pretty linear from that perspective as you're gonna pick up a weapon that you're gonna need to use in order to kill whichever family members habitating the area in which you're in and so that's gonna be part of that uh, now let me talk about the combat because this is the big critical problem that this game has it's uh, the combat is very janky to the point where I was just kind of <laughs> hack and slashing, hoping that I was going to kill the, the if I had something to hack and slash. There was one character where you killed with a gun, and I felt like I was just shooting. I didn't know if I was hitting half the time or not. This is the only. Th this is the only one thing that I think was done the worst in this game. Again, it didn't break the game because it was. You know, as long as you could just smash, you, your health lasted long enough that you could just sit there and smash them, so you're going to be able to get through. And it's not a big aspect of the game. I mean, it is from the story standpoint, but it isn't from the total amount of time you're going to be utilizing weapons in order to kill family members. Um, so, it's not a huge part, so it's like, you're not going to be, like, disgruntled by it, but it's still not, it wasn't, it wasn't well done in that aspect. Most of the other parts of the game, like like the switches and the puzzles and all that stuff, all that stuff worked really well. I, fa I found that in the middle of the game, the, the one particular puzzle that you had to look on the wall for uh, the combination was probably the best laid out puzzle. And you would come across them before you got knew that they were combinations and you wondered what they were. And I liked the way that they had that set up. But uh, yeah, the combat was probably the biggest... Uh, Eek to me because it just didn't it didn't work very well. Uh, but again, I, I I hesitate to say I disliked the game because I actually did enjoy playing it. Uh, it was kind of, it was uh, very short, but it was also moderately fun aside from the combat aspect. I wish that the I hope that they can improve on the combat in a future game or maybe even update this game with a little bit better uh, hit hit detection and things of that nature. Um, but, you know, overall, it's okay. Um, let me talk about the achievements. So this game is going to take you an hour and 15 minutes if you use my video guide that is also on my YouTube page here. Uh, that will, you will get that, uh, 1000 knocked out. So it's definitely a great game for achievements. Um, I don't know if it's, if people want to pay $25 to get a thousand points and an hour and a half or less, but this game would definitely set you up to do it. Um, as for the price, I would definitely wait until it goes on sale at some point. Uh, I'm not sure what, like I said before, I'm not sure why they picked the price point that high. Uh, I feel like this could be a 10 or $15 game and they would sell a lot more copies. Um, yeah, it's, it's it's tough because when I understand it's tough with it when you're an indie developer and it's your first game like I get it but I feel like if you wanted to maximize the amount of people that buy your game or maybe work out a deal with Microsoft to get it on game pass I think you you're gonna make you know more money those ways but I don't know I've, I've never been a de uh, independent developer or even a developer of any capacity so I don't know the ins and outs of all that and what goes into these decisions but overall, I'm going to give this game a 7 out of 10. Now, if this game was done by a developer that was not brand new, and, and a, literally a solo developer, I would give it a 6 out of 10. I'm giving it a 7 out of 10 because I think that there's that it's a very good starting point game. And I think it's actually like decently fun. I didn't hate it by any stretch. Like I said, the only thing I didn't like was the combat. But everything else, like the, the puzzles were kind of cool and the, you know, looking for the different things you need was okay. The, I just, man, I wanted to like it a lot more too because I, I like survivor horror games. I think, I think if you like these games or if you like Deadly Premonition or Res or something, this is like a very simplified game that, you know, maybe it's, it would have been more... Yeah, it's it's kind of it's it's almost like a game that would have come out like ten years ago. But again, it's, you know, solo dev that's gonna you gotta start somewhere. 
So, overall, I'm going to say 7 out of 10. It does lose, you know, two points directly because of the combat alone. Well, one point because of the combat alone. Um, it's. I wish I could... Yeah, you know, just, I mean, I didn't, I mean, I, I didn't like, I didn't dislike it, so I, I have trouble giving it a low score. But I also think there's some critical problems. But, like I said, you could do worse than this game, I think. It's not as, you know, I just, I just, I liked it. I mean, I can't help it. Uh, I mean, it has a condemned feel a little bit. The, the horror in it is actually, I should have talked about that earlier. The horror in the game is actually okay, too. The, uh, uh, there's a few moments where I, I literally got chills. I don't get chills very easy. I, I, you know, Condemned is one of the few games on Xbox that's in the past that I was able to get chills from. There were some moments in this game that I got that chill, especially when you went into the uh, into the center, into the main area of the game, and the in the uh, uh, I believe it was a uh, abandoned school. So that was pretty interesting. Uh, place <laughs> to say the least so yeah i mean again it I probably wouldn't pick it up for 25 bucks but maybe when it goes on sale definitely if you're an achievement whore or achievement hunter i i would i would definitely recommend for you guys uh, if you really like survivor horror games like condemned and other types then you might you'll like it probably just because of what it is again it's very simplified so and it's pretty linear, so it's not, you know, there's not going to be a lot of running around like a chicken with your head cut off. You're going to be just kind of going straight forward, figuring out the puzzles and killing the family members. But overall, solid game for, to me. Um, I hope everybody likes the game that decides to play it. And definitely you achievement hunters, go out there and grab it because you're going you're gonna to enjoy this. I'll put a link to the description of the game as well as my video for the achievement walkthrough so that you can get that done quickly as well. Well, that's all I have, so you guys have a nice day.